Hello friends, I'm Isil Khan and you're watching an engineer why. Remember this is part third of the seven engineering MCQs related to construction. Up to 25 questions. We have done those guys in the last episode and this is question 26, okay? For each story of building, the depth of exploration should be 1 meter, 2 meter, 3 meters or 4 meters. Now which one is the correct option over here? Remember the depth of exploration for each story means the distance between two floors okay so one meter cannot be the correct option over here because one meter is about uh, uh, you can say 3.281 okay feet that is a less video okay nobody then can enter the room and option b cannot be also the correct one because two meters means about uh, you can say seven feet okay just about that so 7 feet is also a less video, okay? 7 feet is the standard height of the door which cannot be provided for the uh, floor to floor distance, okay? So 2 meters is also not the correct answer over here. However, 3 meters and 4 meters can be the correct options over here because the standard height of the room can be 10 to 12 feet. Now 3 meters is just a, a, an adjacent video to 10 feet, okay? 9 point something. So option C can be the correct answer and I'm satisfied with that guy. However, 4 meters uh, is, is a higher video than the uh, 12 feet. So 4 meters cannot be also the correct option. So the correct option over here we got is 3 meters, okay? That's the correct option over here. Now question 27, pick up the correct statement from the following. Option A, plain cement concrete is equally strong in compression as well as in tension. Nope, this is wrong, okay? Plain cement concrete is stronger in compression and weaker in tension. So this is not the correct statement over here. Option B, slump test is performed to check concrete strength. Nope. Slump test is performed to check the workability. That means option B is also not the correct statement. Curing of concrete is done for proper compaction of cement. Nope. Curing of concrete is done just to uh, not lose the, uh, the moisture content inside the concrete, you can say, okay? So option C is also not the correct statement over here. Option D, finest models is the index number expressing the relative size of both cores and fine aggregates. Yes, this one is the correct statement we got over here from the following. So that means option A is wrong, B is wrong, option C is wrong, option D is okay over here. The correct answer to question 27 is option D. Alright, moving ahead to question 28. The bearing capacity of a waterlogged soil can be improved by compacting the soil. Nope. Okay. A waterlogged soil means there must be a lot of water in the soil. Okay. So compaction cannot be done over here. How can you compact a waterlogged soil? That's not the correct option over here. Option B. Draining the soil. Wow. That's, that's the one I'm satisfied with. Okay. When we remove the water from the waterlogged soil, that means we got only soil, then we can compact that guy, okay? So option B can be the correct one over here. However, we're gonna analyze option C and D as well, okay? Increasing the depth of foundation, nope, okay? In waterlogged soil, if you increase the depth of foundation, that increases the, uh, the cost, okay? So that is not the correct thing over here to increase the bearing capacity okay or to improve the bearing capacity so option c is also not the correct and option d cannot be the correct because grouting okay who does grout cement okay cement paste in the waterlogged soil okay i'm not satisfied with that guy okay so option b is the correct answer to 28th question all right moving ahead question 29 the position of brick when laid on its 9 by 9 centimeter with its frog in the vertical plane is called brick on edge, brick on end, brick on bed, brick healed vertically. Okay. Just to understand these guys, let me draw a brick. Okay. If I can draw it better. And remember this is not to scale. Okay. 
this diagram is NTS. All right, just look at this guy. We got a frog. Yeah. So this one is the end. This is the top. Okay. And this is the face or front, you can say. Now I'm going to repeat the question again. The position of brick when laid on its side nine times nine. Okay. This means we're going to lay the brick on the ends just like this. Okay. So one end is going to be at the top and one at the bottom. Okay. No problem. Okay. Whether it's frog in the vertical plane, okay. We got the frog in the vertical plane, okay. That's also okay, okay. So as you can see now, just look at this diagram or this figure. The brick is laid on its ends, okay. That means option B is the correct one and I'm satisfied and happy with that guy. The other options are wrong, okay. Just moving ahead to question 30. All right, a floor constructed with the four to six mm Marble chips is known. Reinforced marble floor. No. Nope. Where is an enforcement? Okay. It is just talking about marble chips. Okay. Only marble chips. So option A is wrong. Okay. Terrazzo floor. Yes. Terrazzo floor is the correct one. When you mix marble chips with powder, that means we got a terrazzo floor. Okay. You can see in the diagram this one. All right. These are stone chips or marble chips. You can say. Okay. Marble floor, no, marble floor can be uh, the tiles, okay, made up tiles, okay, and chip floor, that, that can also be a mosaic or you can say, this can also be a correct answer, however, the terrazzo floor option is the satisfactory and I'm happy with that guy, alright, alright, just moving ahead to question 31, a stair should not have pitch more than 25, 30, 40, and 50 degrees. Wow, okay. The pitch of the stair means the angle which the waist is making with the horizontal line, okay, or just the, the, the ratio of rise to run, okay, tangent of theta, you can say. All right. So, as I have studied this guy, the stair should not have pitch less than 25 degrees and more than 40 degrees. So, the correct answer to question 31 can be option C, okay, 40 degrees. All right, question 32. Depth or height of the arch is the perpendicular distance between intradose and extradose, vertical distance between springing line and intradose, perpendicular distance between springing line and extradose, none of the above. So to understand these guys, let's study this figure okay as you can see the option first perpendicular distance between introdose and extrodose it is just talking about this guy okay this distance okay because extrodose is the 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 top surface and introdose is the bottom surface you can say okay so that distance between these guys can be the correct answer over here and i'm happy and satisfied with option a this time however we're gonna analyze option b and c as well okay the vertical distance between springing line and introdose that means this this one just okay this guy and the option c means this guy okay because springing line is this line which is just uh, uh, joining the, the the springing points so the correct answer to question 32 is option first or option a all right Question 33. Pick up the correct statement from the following. Okay. The pile driven in sand is called sand pile. Yes, that's correct. Okay. The drilled hole filled with sand is called sand pile. Nope. Okay. It is a hole. When you fill a hole, okay, with the sand, that cannot be a pile. Okay. However, a pile which is driven in sand that can be a sand pile. All right. I can see the sand piles are used for bearing purposes. No. Bearing pile, however, are used for bearing purposes. Okay. And none of these. So the correct answer I got over here is option A. All right. Okay. Question 34. A wall constructed to resist the pressure of an earth filling is called retaining wall. That's very simple. Okay. And I think this question is repeated one. Yeah. However, we can discuss this again. Okay. No problem. 
just look at this picture okay you can see this diagram and this wall this is a retaining wall which is retaining a filling material you can say okay it is the purpose of retaining wall and breast wall is just par to support the cutting line okay this one and retaining wall as you can see this guy this just retain and support the filling material buttress and parapet wall cannot be an option over here because buttress are you can say supports okay which supports in other wall okay when the height of a wall becomes uh, bigger or you can say uh, more and more then we construct another support which support the longer or the taller wall that wall is known by buttress as you can see in this diagram so this is not the correct answer okay it is not just uh, supporting or resist the pressure of in earth filling okay and parapet wall these are partition walls just like this guy okay so this cannot be an option over here so we got an option of retaining wall over here is option a all right moving ahead to 35 wow this thing is little huge and complicated because it, it is all about design okay all right we got two columns 50 times 50 and 60 times 60 carrying 80 tons and 120 tons of loads respectively the center to center blah 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 blah, blah. okay all right so which one is the correct option over here all right option d how how option d i'm gonna design this guy okay and we're gonna compare the parameters let me just draw the the diagram if i can draw it better like this okay we got these guys two columns okay with footing one is supporting 80 tons and one is carrying 120 tons all right and the center to center distance between these two guys is five meters okay so the first thing i'm gonna calculate is the center of gravity from the center of small column which must be w2 which is 120 okay times the distance to the smaller column which is five meter this time and divided by the total load which is 80 times 120 the external load the self weight of the structure is not included over here okay and this is of course uh, because of the center of gravity of the putting area does coincides with the center of gravity of the combined loading okay you can say in the combined footing so the center of gravity from the center of small column is three meters that means we got one option is correct is the option a however we're gonna analyze option b c and d as well okay like i'm gonna analyze this time option c because that guy is little easy and uh, the option B is little huge and you can say a little lengthy that's why I'm gonna uh, focus on option C this time area of the pudding okay that must be the total load divided by say bearing capacity or permissible bearing capacity so the total load area of the footing means the total load divided by say bearing capacity which is of course 80 plus 120 that is the total load okay acting on the uh, structure on on the both columns however this is not the total load we gonna add 10 percent is the self weight of the structure all right 10 percent divided by the permissible bearing capacity which is 20 tons per square meters and okay that's given so when you do little mathematics with this guy like 80 plus 120 that is uh, 200 okay and 10 times up to 100 is 20 so 220 divided by 20 that means we got the 11 square meter is the area of the uh, footing slab you can say okay so option c is also correct over here all right now let's analyze option b okay the length of foundation slab equals 7 meters all right okay so this guy can be of course uh, 25 centimeters or you can say 0 0.25 meters you can say plus the half uh, dimension of the column because this column is 50 times 50 centimeter a square okay and half is already taken with 3 meters so we're gonna take half only which is 25 centimeters or 0 0.25 meters this time plus this guy 3 meters now we got the one side okay we're gonna multiply with 2 to get the whole thing okay or the whole length so we got L or the length of foundation slab equals 7 meters. That means option B is also correct over here. Wow. 
So the correct option we got over here is D because all of the above are correct. All right, that was simple, not that complicated. All right, guys, so it is enough for today and just wait for part four.